Let's all go to the lobby. Hey guys, this is Zach the Wretched Watchman and welcome into Showtime. Now what we do here is we understand that there is a, uh, a major play, a major push when it comes to predictive programming. Now there's two elements to this. One has to do with the Luciferian rule book that they are required to tell us what they're going to do ahead of time. And they usually do it in symbolism or in some type of cryptic way that we can still, we're still able to see it or figure it out. Even if it takes a long time to see it, uh, they're still required to tell us what to do. Now we understand, uh, that Satan likes to twist things. We understand that Satan likes to, uh, flip upside down what God does. And so what God has commanded us as watchmen to do is to sound the alarm to warn people. Uh, and as long as we do our job, if they do not take heed to what's going on, the blood is now on their hands, not on ours. But if we fail to do the job as we're commanded to do, then the blood then comes on our hands because of they, uh, they were not warned properly of what's going on. Now, Satan has flipped that upside down. When it comes to what the Luciferian cabal is uh, attempting to do, uh, um, they always tell us ahead of time and this is about passing blame and so if they warn us ahead of time then they go well you actively chose we warned you you actively chose to walk into it so that's ultimately what you did the blood's now on our hands as opposed to theirs and so they kind of do the same thing the other thing has to do with is uh just giving us an idea of what they're working on they like to taunt us satan has pride they the luciferian cabal also has pride and so they love to taunt us with what is coming down the pike for what they're going to actually do to us and so they like to release things when it comes to movies they like to put things in movies that uh some people say wow that was a prophetic movie but ultimately what was going on is they were just telling us what eventually was going to come down the pike now there's so many movies out there that tell us in advance what's going to happen that tell us ultimately what they're trying to accomplish and what they're trying to do and so we're just going to kind of take it one by one and we're going to take a look at different uh levels to it whether it has to do with technology whether it has to do with medical whether it has to do with government whether it has to do with religious aspects we're going to be taking a look at some of these movies as we go through and kind of break down uh how they are predictive in their programming and what elements are a part of it and so i think it'd be kind of fun i think it would, in a sick and twisted type of way i guess um but you know it's something a little bit different and uh, i know predictive programming is is always fascinating to people they always like to compare real world to what's going on in the movies and so why not do something like this so for our first uh edition of this the first movie we're going to be taking a look at i think is probably one of the biggest biggest predictive programming movies that have ever existed all i'm offering is the truth nothing more And that is The Matrix. We're going to be taking a look at The Matrix ultimately, and we're going to break down some of the elements of it and how it has to do with the religious as well as uh, technology and governance beliefs uh, that are part of this and how we are seeing The Matrix unfold right in front of our eyes in a very interesting way. So first thing we want to do, what is The Matrix? I know some people have seen it. Some people don't. Some people know about it. They don't necessarily know what's going on. I'll try and break it down in a very easy, you know, summary uh, type of thing. Ultimately, what happened was people got together, created AI. They created an AI system and they kept feeding this AI system. It eventually became sentient, created its own AI army. Uh, then the humans and the AI had a war against each other. Um, which eventually the humans lost and the AI ended up then locking them into a virtual simulation world uh, while and where they will live the rest of their lives. And so these uh, humans then provide energy for the AIs in order to function. Um, and so people are locked into a virtual prison while feeding energy to the AI and the people have no idea because they're born into it. Now the AI is able to grow humans 
which we kind of see what's going on in the world when it comes to that. We'll get to that in just a second. But they're able to grow humans, and the kids are born into the virtual world ultimately not knowing that it's a fake world and then when they die they're they're done is that at some point in the early 21st century all of mankind was united in celebration we marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to ai ai there are fields endless fields where human beings are no longer born we are grown the Matrix is a computer-generated dream world built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. No. And so that's simply what's going on. And so the, the whole goal is to try and get humans, specifically the one, out of the virtual world in order to defeat defeat the AI in the real world. Now, I may have already lost some people on that, but that's pretty much as simple as I can I can ultimately make it. So let's kind of break this down a little bit. Man creates AI. What do we see going on today? We see the same thing. Man gave birth as uh, as uh, the Matrix says, gave birth to AI and everybody celebrated it. When we look at what's going on in the world today, where the, every advancement with AI is celebrated by humans, they think it's absolutely awesome and marvelous and wonderful. They love it. They're celebrating the creation of this system. AI then eventually becomes sentient. It's able to start thinking on its own. It's able to start creating things for its own. They don't know, need humans anymore. And so they begin a war against the humans Ultimately, what happens is the humans believe that if they can take out the sun, which is giving solar power to the AI, then they'll be, able, they'll be able to defeat it. So what they do is they go and destroy the sky. They black out the sky, blocking the sun. And so the AI, in order to try and survive, has to create another power source. So eventually they grab control of humans, plug them into these uh, bath type things where it's feeding nutrients in order to keep them alive and they live in a virtual world while providing energy for the AI to live. So ultimately that is what we see going on. Now, when we look at what's going on in the world today, we see what they're trying to do. They are increasing AI and its intelligence as well as giving it keys to human life. We see what they're doing in the military. They're using AI in order, in order to target people, uh, to kill them. Um, they just haven't given them the keys to actually push the button for sending the bullet yet, which eventually that's going to happen. If not, AI is just gonna grab control of it and lock humans out at some point. That's We see this happening and that's the next step, especially when we see what's going on with demonic intelligence ultimately demons if they haven't already will grab control of ai and will be under control of the antichrist we see what uh, what's going on when it comes to replacing humans ai is absolutely trying to replace humans they're trying to take control of all things like music uh movies art they're starting to go after physical jobs like in warehouses and stuff like that we see what's going on when it comes to the military what the, uh, the computers ai is doing when it comes to finance they're starting to take control of the positions of people so people are are becoming less and less needed when it comes to a lot of these jobs and that's only going to progress further from here and so as they replace humans humans become worthless uh to the elites as well as ai and it continues to feed into the ai system making it more powerful we see what they're trying to do when it comes to cloud seeding. We see what they're trying to do when it comes to blocking out the sun. We see what's going on with the climate change. We see what they're doing with the ozone and stuff like that. They're trying to play God and they're uh, playing weather control. At what point do they maybe block out the sky if they so choose to do that? I don't think that'll happen. Maybe it will. Bible talks about uh, some things about the darkness and everything. So maybe that plays a part in that. Who knows? We don't know at this point. Remember, we don't have all the answers. Now the Bible tells us what's going to happen, but a lot of the prophecy within things like Revelation aren't for us, for the church. They're going to be for those, uh, the Jews, as well as the the, um, the last chance tribulation saints uh, for their time because they're going to be living through that. So we don't necessarily know what's going to happen there. Now, AI grows humans. Well, we see what's going on uh, with uh, the scientists out there, the researchers, as well as using computers and AI in order to try and grow human tissues and embryos without the use of man and woman, without the seed, without the egg. They're, they're doing these types of things. We've seen reports out there that they are doing 
such things as trying to grow these things. We also see the attempt in order to create artificial wombs. Now, artificial wombs uh, look and act very similar to the pods that humans are placed in in the matrix in order to feed them, in order to uh, keep them alive, in order to keep them healthy. Uh, we see what's going on with artificial wombs and who's to say that they don't start actually putting people in there. So we see that they're trying to design and create new humans without the need of people, which that's what the AI managed to do in the movie, The Matrix, as well as artificial wombs is the, the prison for the physical body um, to do it. So we see what they're trying to do with that. And then we see what's going on with energy, energy sources, using humans for energy sources. We have this shift going into digital and electronics, but the question that always pops up is how are they gonna power this stuff? They can't even power the electronics that they have now. Well, we see what they're, what they're doing when it comes to 6G. We understand that they're already working on 7G, 8G, 9G, and all that type of stuff, but we see what they're doing with 6G, and they're able to power electronics using human energy. Simple band around a wrist and using LED frequency lighting is able to power electronics. Somebody who had a band around their wrist was able to actually power and charge a phone that was in their hand. So we already see the, uh, the direction of trying to use humans as batteries anyways. No. I don't believe it. It's not possible. I didn't say it would be easy, Neo. I just said it would be the truth. Stop. So we see what's going on with technology, we see a pattern when it comes to the promotion and the elevation of AI. We see what they're trying to do when it comes to using uh, energy um, and these types of things, as well as designing and growing humans and, and life and all these types of things. They are trying to play God. And ultimately, a lot of what we saw in the Matrix, they're actually attempting to do today. Now, let's take a look from the religious aspect, because I think this is an important aspect to understand. Now, it's key to remember that the world's first religion is Gnosticism. It was birthed in the Garden of Eden when Satan went to Eve and said, you will be like God if you eat of this fruit. Now, ultimately, what does that mean? Well, that was the birth of Gnosticism, which eventually branched out into all of the world's religions that we see today. Remember, Christianity is a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not a religion. All religion comes from Satan, and it all stems from this one religion that uh, Satan started in the garden with Eve. Now, when you go into the Gnostic texts, what they believe, and, and you will find this all over in various religions out there, most religions, if not all religions out there, since they all stem from the same thing, is that God, the God that we know, God of the Old Testament, um, is actually, according to the Gnostics, bad. He's the bad guy. He's also known as the Demiurge. And what he did is he created a planet, which then he locked humans in there in order to punish them, in order to torture them. And so in order to escape the Demiurge's creation and enter into the real world, Sophia sent down Lucifer in order to get uh, Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit, to be enlightened, to find the new knowledge, to learn the truth of what's going on. And once they do that, they'll be able to escape the prison planet or the evil world that the Gamma Urge has locked them into. So when we look at the idea of the Matrix, the same thing is going on. The Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. What is the matrix? Control. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. The evil AI has created a virtual world, a prison planet for humans to live in. Once you learn the truth, however, 
you will then have the new knowledge or the enlightenment and we see Buddhism and Hinduism and New Age and, and the Gnostics and Hermeticism and all these other religions out there has to do with becoming enlightened. And so you can enter into the next dimension. Well, this is the same thing with the Matrix. Once you learn the truth, where if you remember the scene from the Matrix where Morpheus offers the blue pill or the red pill. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Blue pill is you forget everything ever happened. You live your life in the matrix and you will know and you won't know any better. Or you can become enlightened and learn the truth by taking the red pill and you're able to escape. Well, that's what Neo did in the matrix. Same thing here. Once you learn the truth, you'll be able to escape the matrix. Just like in Gnosticism, once you reach enlightenment and learn the truth, you'll be able to escape the prison planet that the Demiurge has created. We can see that element within the Matrix. It's fascinating. Now, there's a scene in the movie as well where Neo is going to visit the Oracle or the computer program within the Matrix that is built to study uh, the psychology of humans in order to generate the world where it'll be more confining and, and the humans won't know any better of what's going on. And when he enters into her place, there's several kids there and one is dressed as like a Buddhist monk and the kid is sitting there bending a spoon with his mind. Now, Neo sees this and he asks, how do you do it? Well, the Buddhist kid who's spoon bending says, once you learn the truth that the spoon isn't real, you will then be able to do it. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. The Oracle will see you now. And so once Neo has learned that and he realizes that the spoon isn't real because he's living or he's in the matrix where nothing is real, he's able to then bend the spoon. The same thing when it comes to Gnosticism. Once you learn the truth, then you're able to realize that you're living in a fake world. You will reach enlightenment and be able to pass through or be able to alter the things that you're living in now remember one of the uh metaphysical relation uh, uh rel religions that comes from gnosticism has to do with theory of mind now what is theory of mind it's the belief that if i can think something and believe that it will happen you will then be able to alter the reality in front of you so it's one of those things where you know well, if you just have positive outlook, positive things are going to happen to you. You're generating, you're creating, you're thinking something into existence. It's the same thing that we see happening here in the Matrix as well. Now, <clears throat> at the end of all this, at the end of the movie, after Neo learns the truth and he's able to see what's going on, he's able to bend the, the Matrix world that he's living in, he then believes that he becomes the one because ultimately the goal for Morpheus and the team that finds Neo is to try and find the one. Now, who's the one? Well, the one is basically the God figure. Once he reaches that enlightenment and he believes that he is God, he's able to change, manipulate, and overcome all challenges within the matrix.
how. He is the one. And this is ultimately a part of Gnosticism as well, where we are all gods. We just have to unlock that. And how do you do that? You do it through Christ consciousness and conscious evolution. I believe that I'm a god. And once I have enlightenment, the truth, the new knowledge, I will then be able to unlock the god within me, escape creation, and join the other co-creators, the other gods out there. You will see that this is also similar to what Mormonism believes as well where they are all gods and once they accomplish what they're supposed to do reach the new knowledge and pass through then they will be a god of their own planet that's what mormonism believes so you're seeing all the various elements of this within the matrix movie it has the gnostic religious aspect to it it has technological uh stuff when it comes to human batteries as well as designing humans to the ai system and it has to do with this virtual world that they're ultimately trying to do as well it's not just the gnostic belief but we see what they're trying to do when it comes to creating this metaverse we see things coming uh from the rand um uh, department as well as darpa where they're trying to create a virtual world where people won't even realize that they're actually living in a virtual world. And we can also see some of the quotes from Ray Kurzweil when it comes to creating the singularity, where he said, it's gonna come a time where the mixing of man and machine, of mixing of virtual and reality, will blend together so well that you will not know where reality ends and the virtual world begins. Is it really so hard to believe? Your clothes are different, the plugs in your arms and head are gone. Your hair has changed. Your appearance now is what we call residual self-image. It is the mental projection of your digital self. This... This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. So we see that the Matrix movie is very, very deep when it comes to predictive programming on all levels, religious, technological, governance or control type of level. We see that they're trying to accomplish pretty much exactly what the Matrix movie is, is telling us. And they're doing it on the beliefs of their Gnostic beliefs as well. So hopefully, that gives you an, a better idea of what the matrix is because i know here on this channel when i'm talking about a lot of this technology and stuff like that i make reference to the matrix a lot because i think it's a movie that tells us a lot gives us an idea of what they're aiming for and what they're accomplishing and i think it's a big movie that even if you don't watch it which i'm not saying anybody should go and watch it because it's not necessarily the great uh, a great christian movie or anything uh, by any means but i think it's something that we should at least be aware of and hopefully if you haven't seen it or don't know anything about it this has given you an idea of truly what that movie is revolves around what it's based on and what it's telling us and so when you see these things uh these these signs and the convergence of this stuff as the antichrist beast system is being built in front of us you will ultimately have a better idea of what the outcome is that they're trying to accomplish at, as how far God's going to allow it to happen, we don't know. But ultimately, we understand that God, the true God, not the fake Gnostic Demiurge, but the true loving God that sent his son Jesus Christ down uh, to die for us, to give us salvation. Ultimately, we know that he's in control of all this. And we have nothing to worry about as long as we place our faith within Jesus Christ. New knowledge and enlightenment is never going to give us salvation. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father except through him keep that in mind so don't have no fear or don't have no fear have no fear yeah have no fear that's the proper way and uh yeah ultimately hopefully this will uh hope you guys see what they're trying to accomplish they're trying to lock us in the matrix y'all god's got other other plans and we can read that in his word that's for sure anyways thank you guys for joining me today and uh yeah this is zach the retro watchman i'll catch you guys next time peace out Maranatha.